Good morning. Myself, Dr. Rajiv Mishra. I am from IIT Patna. So today's lecture topic is introduction to cloud. So this particular lecture, after completion, you will be knowing the following. First is to understand of today's cloud scenario. Second is you will have the knowledge of different objectives of cloud. Third one is that you will be knowing about the current limitations of the classical cloud and then after that you will be knowing to know why there is a need of uh, edge computing. So let us get started. So uh, in this particular scenario of today's cloud we will now explore the current state of the classic cloud. So in that you will be knowing what do you mean by the highly centralized set of resources which is the characteristics of today's cloud. The second important concept of today's cloud is that, that the compute which is these days called as virtual machines. Now how this compute is going beyond virtual machines we will know about that in today's cloud scenario. Third thing we have to know that that the cloud which is also used for the storage. So now what is the newer development in that context is that the storage which cloud provides is complemented by the CDN that is content delivery network. So this also we will talk about briefly in today's cloud. Important thing about the today's cloud is the network stack. So this network stack is now being made as programmable. So how that is all done, what is the technology which is used in the growth of today's cloud, we will see this also in great details. Then the web and the software as a service which is an application of uh, today's cloud. Then infrastructure as a service is also the model in which the cloud is being offered by various cloud providers or vendors and the highly available cloud is the resultant of all these new innovations. So here in this figure you can see that this is the place which is called as a data center and this data center has hundreds and thousands of computer nodes. These computing nodes are uh, then connected with the networking which is called a data center networking and this particular data center every cloud vendor has this particular data centers located at different geographic positions across the globe which are in turn connected by the different data center networking. So inter and intra data center networking is that called networking of a cloud which is there. Uh, so we will talk about that, how the cloud is providing you the services, what is the model. Now as far as earlier cloud is seen as highly centralized set of resources. So you can see here in the cloud data center if you can see that hundreds and thousands of computing nodes are connected via the network. So this particular model which is called data center will contain the highly centralized set of resources such as compute, storage and the networking. So all these three different segments will be treated as highly centralized set of resources which today's cloud will provide to different applications to run on it. Now let us see what we mean by highly centralized set of resources which is being supported by these data centers. So the current state of today's cloud which is also known as highly centralized set of resources uh, follows an um, architecture which is called a client server architecture. So the cloud computing uh, started as all about this virtual machine and that were running in the remote data center or let us say uh, storage system. So that we have shown in the previous slide 
that you can see here this is called a data center. So, this highly centralized architecture closely resembles 90s client server computing. So, client server architecture has a client and a server. So, that particular data center which you have seen is mimics the server, whereas the client system which is the machines which the client used to connect through the network or through the internet to the cloud data center uh, is called a client. So, client and the server is the model or is the architecture which cloud provides the services in this way. Now, for example, you can think of that the cloud which is also the remote data center or a remote infrastructure uh, and this remote infrastructure is exposed by these different providers such as Amazon, Microsoft, Google, IBM and many others is nothing but a server in this architecture and the machines from which you are connecting to it and consuming the computing resources or cloud resources is called as the client. So, in this example you can see that this is the server which is now also provided with the help of a cloud data center which comprises of the resources such as the computing, storage and the networking. Now, as far as this particular server or uh, in this architecture which is called a client server architecture uh, in which this today's cloud is operating uh, is being uh, supported by, by provided by different vendors such as Amazon, Microsoft, Google, IBM and many others. Now, there are different models of uh, this architecture to be supported and they are called as a public cloud. If let us say that this entire data center, all the data center or a computing uh, infrastructure or a resources, if it is provided by these vendors, then they are called as a public cloud. Whereas, if it is supported by that organization itself, not taking the help of these external uh, vendors like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, if it is provided internally, let us say, for example, let us say IIT Kanpur can have this kind of data center of its own and running this architecture that is client server architecture, then that cloud is called a private cloud. So, this is the example of a private cloud that is called uh, IIT Kanpur or some other IITs who runs their own data center and uh, public cloud means that if you use this computing resources as a service which comes from either Microsoft, Amazon, Google, IBM uh, then it is called a public cloud and the hybrid is the combination of both that is the organizations which uses their data center as well as they also extend it so that it uses the public uh, infrastructure or the public uh, cloud also. If both the clouds are there then it is called the hybrid cloud. To summarize what we have seen here in this particular slide is that the today's cloud which provides highly centralized resources such as compute, storage and the networking is often is supported by an architecture which is called a client server architecture. So, the, so the machines or the users if we are trying to get this access to the highly centralized computing and storage resources then we are, will become the client machine because our machines are not having that kind of we are going to access the, the highly centralized resources through the internet. So, so, these machines which connects to the cloud whether it is a public cloud or it is a private cloud then this through the internet then it is called the client machine. Whereas, on the other side uh, these highly centralized 
resources of computing and storage is provided through the place which is called the data center and in this client server architecture we call it as a server. So this client server architecture is example which is shown over here and it provides the cloud uh, computing to support the various applications. Now this particular uh, server or a cloud uh, which is having which is comprised of hundreds and thousands of the machines which are housed in a place which is called a data center. Now how that is all being uh, provided as a service? So the technology which is called the virtualization. So virtualization is the key technology. Virtualization is the key technology for this particular today's cloud. So this particular technology will allow sharing. So virtualization is nothing but it allows the sharing of computing storage, computing storage and networking. So that particular technology uses the concept which is called the virtualization and in this virtualization it often applies the concept which is called the hypervisors. So a server with the help of hypervisor is virtualized or is virtualizing its compute so that, so that different users can simultaneously use that computing as the service uh, that is the same server is now virtualized will become the virtual server or a virtual machine. So virtual machine comprises of all uh, CPU or let us say virtual CPU that is called compute, storage and the networking is all virtualized. So multiple uh, users can coexist or multiple users application can coexist with the help of this technology which is called the virtualization. And this virtualization often uses uh, will, will allow the sharing of these resources. The model to access this uh, uh, sharing is called a client server architecture and that is all we have already explained in today's cloud. Now next thing is that what is the new development so far you have seen the concept of the uh, virtualization which which allows the sharing in the form of virtual machines and this virtual machine is the machines or the infrastructure as a service called I infrastructure as a service model. So infrastructure as a service means that physical machine uh, which comprises of CPU, memory and the network is now virtualized so that it gives the concept of a virtual machine. So virtual machines are being uh, given as a service to different vendors or to the different clients. So these clients will uh, connect with the help of internet and uh, gain, gain the access of virtual machines. So the compute uh, so far uh, means uh, classical cloud was supported by these virtual machines. Now let us see that this compute is not confined up to the virtual machine is going beyond that we will understand in this particular slide. So although the compute or the cloud resembles the 90s client server computing, but at the same time compute has gone beyond virtual machines. So the first generation of cloud was all about the virtual machines that we have already discussed and seen in the previous slides. Now in this concept of these virtual machines, the, you can programmatically launch a virtual machine and you could do using SSH, uh, log into it and take the con complete control of a virtual machine. For what purpose? You can install your own software applications that is and you run that application on these virtual machines. Now but there is a dramatic shift uh, in compute where the virtual machines are slowly getting replaced by the container. So this is the newer development which we are which we have to now see and understand. So that means this technology of getting this computing or the cloud access which is called a virtual machines are getting replaced by the new technology which is called containers. So there are advantages of containers that you might have already known in the cloud. So what we are now tracking or tracing back is the current state of 
cloud from the classical cloud. So, classical cloud uses virtual machines that we have already seen and that particular virtual machines uh, uses the technology which is called the virtualization and now that virtual machines are now slowly replaced by the new technique which is called the containers. So, containers you can also understand it is a lightweight uh, version of virtual machines and once it is lightweight then it is more efficient uh, to use uh, the, the computing uh, engine and, and the um, uh, cloud as a service. Now, here with the help of this new technique which is called the containers more and more workloads are now moving towards the containers. So, now you have a choice whether to go for whether to go with the virtual machines or to go with the containers. So, we will see that the newer application why they are moving towards containers. So, containers is the technique by which you can access the cloud resources uh, uh, in contrast to the virtual machines. So, this is the the trend of today's uh, cloud is that the computing is going beyond the virtual machines that is nowadays it is used in the form of uh, uh, compute is used in the form of containers which we have already explained. Uh, so, more detail about the container we will understand separately in another lecture. Now, another state of today's cloud is in terms of the storage. Now, what we will understand here in this particular session or the slide is that this storage is often complemented by the content delivery network. CDN means that now let us understand that how the storage is complemented by content delivery network and what is the use of it and why today's cloud or is, is adopting this storage which is to be complemented by content delivery network. So, another important trend almost in all the public clouds are, are in the form of storage offering not only compute, but storage is also one of the important resource which most of the applications are using out of the cloud as a service. So, this is also often called as a object storage. So, this object storage is now complemented by uh, the technology which is called a content delivery network. So, we will understand what do you mean by CDNs of today. So, to understand this let us take this example that whenever you put an object into a bucket or a container of a public cloud storage you then if you do a click on a check box to basically replicate and cache the data across multiple edge locations. So, that is nothing but the caching at multiple places of that same object or storage that possibility is now there provided the, the client wants it. So, that it will be that object storage is not only confined cent centralized storage, but it will be replicated at across and, and cache across various uh, data locations that is called edge locations. But this edge is quite different. This edge is not that the edge computing which we will be talking about later in this particular slide. So, this edge is the, uh, the caching, this edge refers to the caching. So, the edge locations of CDN means the caching. and is not to be understood as edge computing. So, that is what we have understood that this object storage is not only stored at one place if the client wants that this particular object which is stored is to be accessed very quickly or efficiently then caching has to be done at more than one places and those locations where that particular cache or, or it is the object or storage is replicated then they are called the edge locations. So, this edge is not the edge computing, but it is the caching it means the caching and this caching 
is done through the technique which is called a content delivery network. So, all the public cloud uh, vendors or providers, they uh, complement this storage with this concept called content delivery network. For example, if let us say you want to watch a movie and the movie is, is, is a file, let us say that a video file. And this particular movie, if you want to see, if more than one people want to see simultaneously, then and if you store at one place, then what will happen is that this content access will be done through one single place and it may be slowed down. So, if you instead cache at multiple edge locations using content delivery network, if you opt for it, then this serving that particular content or accessing the content will become very fast. So, this kind of uh, sharing, file sharing, video sharing or image file sharing, all these are nowadays norms in various applications. Let us say that Facebook or LinkedIn or many other kind of services which you see that uh, the users together they cooperatively share and the content has to be accessed very fast. So, this particular storage is to be complemented by content delivery network. This is another trend of today's cloud. Now, another important thing is that the networking, you know that if the data center or the today's cloud, which is nothing also called as a server in the client server architecture. Now, these particular uh, so many number of nodes, hundreds of thousands of computing nodes, they are to be networked together. And this network, now when you say that a virtual machine, so virtual machines means that uh, the compute storage and the network. So, network is also shared across multiple clients simultaneously. So, this particular network, uh, if let us say that if it is programmable, then this virtual machine access will become quite flexible and efficient also. For example, you might have seen that although your internet or uh, getting access to any other application is slower, but, but sometimes the, uh, the, if you connect to the Google, that access to the Google is faster. So, that becomes the sharing or a possibility of sharing uh, by, by the Google, let us say that network. So, let us understand about this current state of today's cloud that is called the network stack, why this is programmable and this is the newer development that is there in today's cloud. So, finally, the network has become extremely programmable these days. I have explained you just now about that. So, if you look at the hybrid cloud, multi-cloud scenarios there you can see that how the network traffic is getting routed and how the load balancers, firewall and a variety of network components are configured it as through APIs and programmability. So, therefore, this particular capability of programmability of today's network is enabled with the help of a technology which is called a software defined networking called SDNs. So, this SDNs is enabling this hybrid scenarios particularly when we look at the combination of a software defined network with some of the emerging networking technologies. So, this particular mesh, why it is called a mesh? Because inside data center where you have hundreds and thousands of computing nodes which are connected with each other forming a mesh. So, these mesh, they are opening up additional avenues and some of these very recent trends you can see in the offerings such as clouds anthos and IBM cloud private and some other container based hybrid cloud platforms are heavily relying on programmable network stack and also a combination of SDN with the service mesh. So, this is the current state of the cloud and these trends represents how the cloud is currently being consumed or how it is being delivered to the customers, but the cloud is going through the huge transformation that is not only confined as the highly centralized set of resources. So, you can also understand through this particular figure that you have so many number of computing node and the storage nodes often they are connected by the network. So, these are called racks and every rack on top of it there is a switch, a network switch. This is called top of the rack switch it is called these top of the rack switch in turn they are connected again by another level of switch called a core switch. 
and these are the example of a core switch. This is all the networking and this is the tree like hierarchy in which this networking is there. Now, you can see that networking has to be programmable that is if multiple this is to be shared this networking if you want to be shared or virtualized then it has to be programmable and this sharing of the networking is if it is programmable and the concept which is being brought by the help of software defined network. So, SDNs when they virtualize the network they divide the network into two parts one is called control plane the other is called the data plane or user plane also. So, this particular data plane that is means that this control plane means that you can program this particular network so that this particular network stack is programmable uh, based on different vendors or the provider. So, this is another current trend of today's cloud. Now, you can see that there are multiple waves of innovation which is happening inside the cloud and we will trace back in this course the, the innovation in the cloud which is nothing but a pass to the IoT. So, what do you mean by the pass to IoT or IoT pass how this cloud is now transforming because of the support to the, to the internet of things or IoT. IoT means internet of things. So, let us see that initially the cloud was all about compute storage and the network resources. So, three different resources earlier the cloud was talking about which is to be globally available and highly centralized set of resources. Now, because the cloud made the compute and storage extremely cheap and affordable lot of uh, industrial customers and enterprises started connecting their devices to the cloud. So, the data that was not persisted or aggregated or acquired is now streamed to the cloud because it is extremely cheap to store the data into the cloud. Now, lots of companies and lots of industrial environment they started to take the advantage of cloud by streaming the data coming out from the variety of devices and the sensors. Now, as you know that it is also use the cheaper because of this cheaper compute power to process these data streams and make these sense out of the raw data generated these sensors and the devices and that was the next big shift in the cloud and that was an IoT pass. So, let me summarize what do we mean by the IoT pass is that now since this compute storage and the network resources which were earlier provided globally they have become so cheaper that most of these organizations are called industrial customers they start connecting their devices to the cloud. So, devices are means that the sensors and the actuators when you say devices you mean sensors which will be the source of the environment or the machine data or the industrial environment data and the actuators are a kind of switches on off switch and uh, uh, means some actions that has to be now initiated out of these. So, there are two types of devices and these devices are the industrial devices they come from the industrial scenario. So, these particular devices are often connected to the cloud and now since the cloud resources are which is nothing but a compute storage and the network becomes so cheaper. So, lots of devices now start connecting to the cloud. So, by means that start connecting what they will do is that these devices will stream their, their data which is coming out of these sensors and they will be now using this particular not only for the storage these kind of data, but they will uh, use the enormous cheaper computing power to process these data streams and make the sense of this raw data which is generated out of these sensors and devices. Out of these uh, 
computing uh, power of the cloud. And this particular trend of connecting these devices, lot of industrial devices to the cloud, this also uh, called as a IoT pass. So, this is what is the innovation which is having that why these uh, so many industrial devices are now being started connecting to the cloud in uh, wake of the situation that the, the compute storage and the networks are cheaper. Now, let us see that the, if the so many devices are connecting to the to the cloud, uh, so what are the challenges for the cloud and for this new pass which is called an IoT pass. So, if you look at these particular cloud providers like uh, Microsoft, Google and Amazon. So, all these cloud providers are now supporting a platform for this IoT pass and they are called as Azure IoT, Google Cloud IoT and AWS IoT core. So, all of these kind of platform which supports this IoT pass, so they will give you the mechanism to connect these devices and store the data and process it into the cloud. But it was not sufficient or it was not enough to address lot of situations uh, which the industrial uh, environment is now facing. So, although it is connecting, it is enabling these platforms to connect the devices, but they are not sufficient because lot of situations or scenarios are there which are not able to exploit this IoT pass. So, why this, while this cloud enabled capabilities are still there like big data and IoT, but still uh, there are lot of situations which are still unaddressed even after uh, providing these kind of platforms which allows to connect the devices to the cloud and store and process the data out of these IoT devices. So, let us understand this, what are the challenges it still remains for the IoT pass. So, now you can see that lot of customers were not ready to move the data to the cloud and because of these challenges. So, this has become a challenge why although the cloud is there and the platforms which are being provided by different vendors like Azure IoT or Google IoT and AWS IoT is still why the customers are not ready to move their data to the cloud through these kind of IoT pass or IoT platform. So, we will understand about these challenges and what are the way out this course will tell you about all that intricacies. The second challenge for the IoT pass is that this round trip from the device to the cloud. So, for example, if the device is connected to the cloud, so there are two ways in which two ways in which the data has to move. First, the data has to be carried out from the sensors or the IoT devices to the cloud and perform the computation, oblique storage and then return back the result. So, this particular time is called round trip time. This time is called a round trip. So, round trip means that two trips, one is going from IoT to the cloud, the other is that cloud will give the results. So, it has to come back to the IoT, this is called the round trip. So, this round trip from the devices to the cloud and back to the devices was too long, too long in the sense that application cannot wait this much of time for the computation from the cloud. So, therefore, this is the challenge that many applications which these industries or the uh, which the industrial environment needs to be computed by the cloud, but not during not this too much of time, it can wait for that. So, it was increasingly or increasing the latency and in a lot of mission critical applications, industrial scenarios these kind of latency is not at all acceptable and that has become a challenge for an IoT pass. So, sending the data to the cloud and waiting for the cloud to process it and send back the result was not feasible. So, there had to be a mechanism where the data could be processed locally and compute comes much closer to the devices 
or the sources of the data so that so that's how the iot led to an edge computing and today almost every mainstream organization or enterprise iot platform has a complementary edge offering and associated edge offering and more recently there has been a lot of focus on artificial intelligence so let us see this particular scenario to support the iot pass these are the devices and if directly they are being sent to the cloud it is going to add the lot of latency now to overcome from this this particular section which says that between the device and the cloud let us add a layer of technology which is called an edge computing so the devices need not have to directly do the computation from the cloud rather the cloud will now do an offering of an edge so these the compute or the services which cloud was giving is can also be given by the by the edge if that is the case then the device very de, uh, with the device very close by there is an edge layer or edge computing so edge computing gives the response of devices data computation and the latency can be reduced to a much lower level and which is being acceptable by most of these applications now for this you have to understand what for the devices are sending the data to the to the cloud mostly they are sending the data to the cloud to do the ai computations ai workloads now if the ai workloads are to be supported by the edge offering then these devices can be satisfied with their response at a very lower time so therefore edge computing and associated edge computing with the help of then ai which can be now work along with the cloud and edge together to come up with the ai and so the devices can support or an iot pass can be supported in this particular model so we will see in this particular course how this edge computing uh, comes and solves this particular problem and how this iot pass can become successfully overcoming from these challenges which is uh, known here in two terms one is that the devices which are generating their data that is the industrial uh, use cases are becoming a challenge uh, because of that the data has to move to the cloud uh, and uh, that computation has to come a long way that is a huge amount of round trip time that is being overcome with the help of a technology which is called uh, edge computing and edge computing and uh, this particular artificial intelligence has to be now uh, being uh, carried out at the level of the edge so whatever earlier cloud was doing now edge can also do that uh, with, with the same capabilities with the uh, in conjunction with the with the cloud that is what we are going to see here in this part of the course now we will see that the cloud why the cloud is used for uh, ai that is artificial intelligence and machine learning so today's cloud has become the logical destination for artificial intelligence and machine learning so artificial intelligence and machine learning if you see has two different phases one is called the training which requires a huge amount of large data set which is there for training the artificial intelligence model and machine learning model the other part is called uh, running this model and called inferencing so a new data when it comes the other part that if the model is trained and given that is called the inferencing so artificial intelligence or the machine learning process is is divided into two parts one is called the training the model the other is called inferencing through the model and for training and inference for training you require accelerators that is why the data or the artificial intelligence is now depending upon the cloud so the, so the artificial intelligence and machine learning to do this kind of training 
efficiently requires accelerators like GPU, CPU and FPGAs, CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs and so on. And it has become extremely cheap if you do through the cloud and also very powerful to train a very, very complex or very sophisticated machine learning and AI models. And because of that, this uh, particular cloud is, is a very popular means of uh, doing AI and ML uh, at a much cheaper way and also uh, very powerful way to, to train very complex and sophisticated machine learning and AI models. But in most of the situations, this particular model is restrained in the cloud that it is going to run in an offline environment. Although the training, the model is done in the cloud, but where this application is going to be used, it is used in an offline environment. So therefore, many of these offline environment uh, are not able to exploit this because if let us say internet connectivity is down, then the cloud is no longer connected uh, with that offline environment. So if the environment is offline where it is going to be useful, so this particular model directly uh, using the cloud for AI and ML uh, is becoming a challenge uh, to support uh, in all situations. For example, you might have trained an artificial intelligence model that can identify the, the make and the model of a car automatically and automatically charge the toll fee for that vehicle when it passes through the toll gate. Now since the toll gates are on highways and freeways, a very little connectivity and almost with a no network access, you need to run this model in the offline situation. This is an example or this is the scenario uh, of one such use case where uh, directly connecting, uh, connected with the cloud is not all the time possible. Yet how are you going to use that? AI and ML. So the edge computing comes becomes a boundary for running these particular cloud trained AI model, but running in an offline mode as well within the edge. So that uh, now you are basically looking at the evolution of the cloud and on the waves of innovation. So what this course is about that how to understand this waves of this innovation where even if uh, your application is uh, running in offline mode, how you are going to leverage this uh, cloud for uh, AI and ML and that is nothing but the edge computing. So the clouds are now, earlier it was highly centralized, so the clouds with the help of edge computing, now they are distributed or rather decentralized platform for aggregating the, that storing and processing the data with a high performance computing. So so uh, it has brought to all the devices uh, to the to the cloud with IoT data at the edge, made the cloud decentralized by bringing the compute very closer to the data source and now it is the AI that is actually driving the next wave where the cloud is becoming the de facto standard for training the models and the edge is becoming the de facto standard for running the AI models. So, so one is called as the training, the other is called as the inferencing. So, so if you see the cloud edge together used for AI, so the training is done at the cloud and the inferencing part of, of the AI can be done at the edge and here are the IoT devices and now this IoT devices can get uh, can serve can be served in this particular model quite efficiently with a low latency and also in an offline mode. So the advantage of this particular model is it will serve with a low latency and even it can serve in an offline environment. And this is possible with the help of a technique which is called the edge computing. So edge computing will bring both the advantages that is it will bring the low latency that is it will reduce that round trip time to an affordable latency which is prescribed in the applications. Second is that uh, this particular uh, challenge that still 
to serve the applications being in the offline environment that also become doable and possible uh, with this new approach uh, which is the, the edge computing and the current AI and ML. So therefore, the current cloud which is now going through various levels of innovations, let us summarize the limitations and how the new cloud is now gearing up for all that system. So AI use cases need the real time responses from the devices which they are monitoring. Similarly, the cloud based inference cannot provide this real time response due to the inherent issues with the latency that we have explained with the help of a toll uh, example that if the toll is to be uh, served with the help of AI and ML uh, in an offline mode the cloud cannot do that. So if the edge devices have this particular connectivity issues and no internet connection it cannot perform well therefore uh, this is the limitations of the earlier classical cloud and the sufficient bandwidth also is required to transfer the, the relevant data in the proper time frame and also be an issue. So if you see uh, these uh, classical cloud then the waves of innovation and the evolution of today's cloud what you can see is that let us summarize that the, the classical cloud was being served with the help of virtual machines running in a remote data center or the storage that was offered through a remote data center. Then with the IoT pass these virtual machines are now replaced with the help of containers because of that particular region that they are not be efficient to support so many number of devices which are start connecting to the cloud. So virtual machines are now getting replaced with the help of containers and the workloads uh, of these devices are now uh, moving towards these containers. Then we have also seen that this to support this IoT pass with the AI and ML models of computation of these uh, the data which these devices IoT devices generates these data need to be processed locally need not have to be sent to the cloud due to the round trip uh, delay. So therefore data is to be processed locally and that compute comes much closer to the devices or the sources and that technology is called an edge or an edge computing that we will discuss a later part of this particular course. Now comes the AI and ML. So that particular AI and ML which you can now run at the edge which is very close to the devices that is called edge ML or edge machine learning. So there what you can do you can still train the model on the cloud and now with the edge having lot of computing power sometimes the training also you can do at the edge and but as far as the other part that is inferencing you can do at the edge and this particular capabilities is called edge ML. So let us summarize this particular lecture. So here we have understood about today's cloud which is classical cloud which is highly centralized and uh, a set of resources in terms of compute, storage and the network and often uh, is categorized as the client server architecture of classical cloud. Now then we have seen uh, that the compute which is being provided with the help of the technique which is called the virtual machine in the classical cloud is going beyond that. What is that beyond? is called the containers. We have seen that beyond virtual machine is the containers. So nowadays to support this IoT pass a new technique other than this virtual machines the containers are used. Now another besides compute there is another important resource of a cloud is called the storage. Now storage is also complemented by a content delivery network. So what do you mean by content delivery network that is storage uh, if it is required to be accessed at more than one places. So therefore this storage is not only stored at a centralized highly centralized place but it is to be replicated at various edge locations and that is being supported by a technique called content delivery network. So storage is now complemented by content delivery network and this is also a next wave of innovation that is being supported inside the cloud services now. 
Now, third important thing is the resource which is called the network. We have also seen that this particular virtual machines is being uh, uh, shared across multiple vendors or the users, maybe uh, also with the help of containers. So, how this particular network also can be shared and this sharing can coexist across multiple applications. So, therefore, network stack has to be made programmable. So, we have seen the technique called SDN software defined network is the technology which provides this network sharing across multiple applications and therefore, the network stack has to become programmable that we have already seen here in that as a development of today's cloud. Finally, we have seen that the multiple waves of innovation are happening in the cloud. Why? To support the new kind of uh, use case where the, uh, the, the devices from different industrial enterprises, many devices industrial enterprises start connecting to the cloud and various public cloud providers, they provide a platform such as Azure IoT, uh, similarly uh, AWS IoT and Google uh, Cloud IoT. So, these platforms uh, are available, but still uh, it has to go through lot of challenges called IoT Pass. So, we have seen that these challenges uh, um, to overcome from these challenges, there is an evolution or, or the wave of innovation uh, of a cloud and this is called the edge computing. So, edge computing uh, has to be brought into uh, to, to go forward this IoT Pass and uh, the current cloud how uh, which is highly centralized becomes a decentralized uh, here in this manner. So, in the next class, we are going to discuss more about this new way or new innovation into the cloud that is called edge computing. So, thank you very much for, for listening to this particular lecture. Thank you all. Thank you very much.